All right, so we have our application connected to our Postgres container. So let's go back to how the application was structured. So the goal is to have a device be able to make a call to our application and it should either be able to insert information to our database or retrieve information from our database. Now, initially we showed that it's gonna be controller service repository model, but there are other folders or there are other structures that we're gonna to use to make this application work. I also added these boxes for models and exceptions. Models is gonna be used to create a structure on how you want the information to be stored into the database and how the information is gonna look like when the data is retrieved from the database. So in this portion, we're gonna go over or create our to-do model so that we can show the database how it should expect information to be inserted into the database for it to do and how it should look like when we retrieve it. And then we'll also create our repository, which will be used to take our model and actually communicate with our Postgres container. So the repository is used to, you know, have that layer to communicate with the Postgres container. So let's get started. All right, so now it's time to move over to the application. And the first thing that we need to do is open up this palm.xml because we need to add one more dependency that we're gonna need to start creating our entity. So the thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna add in Spring Boot JPA. And let me just scroll all the way to the bottom so I can add this within this dependencies tag so you can see the dependencies, right? Once you see the opening of this and the closing, right? We gotta insert it between that. So I'm gonna put it as close to the bottom as I can, but I'm gonna put it before the test dependency. Um, so the you know group ID is gonna be org.springbootframework.boot and then the artifact ID is gonna be spring-boot-starter-data-jpa. Pretty long, but it is an essential dependency that we're gonna need to start our application. And uh, you should see like a Maven refresh button at the top right. Press that and it's gonna begin downloading um, that dependency. Now what is Spring Boot or Spring JPA. Spring Boot JPA is a specification for helping us map our object to our database. We're using a relational database, right? So what it's gonna help us do is gonna help us take the object or take the structure that we're gonna create and map our data to the database. Essentially, it's an entity manager API that will help us process queries and transactions based on the object that we use against our database. And that's gonna make a lot more sense as we create our to-do model, but just know that JPA is gonna help us take our object that we're gonna create and store that, you know, put it in a way that the database understands to store. Now, let me right click right here. We're gonna actually start creating our model once this dependency is finished downloading, which it is, and let me close this out. And let me right click into the models folder. Hopefully you guys can see the left. It's pretty small. I have, there's no, in IntelliJ, there's no way of increasing the size of this folder structure, but just know that I'm right clicking on models and I'm going to insert a new Kotlin class slash file. Now there is two ways of creating um, this entity. We can either use a regular class or you can use a data class. In Kotlin, a data class is just used to hold data. So, I mean, that kind of is the criteria of what we're doing, but in this case, I'm just gonna use a regular to, a regular class to store our to-do structure. Cool, and I just see the to-do class, and now we can begin. So, I talked about entities, right? Entities in JPA are just plain old Java objects that is going to represent the data that we're gonna persist into our database. So it's just gonna, it's just a way to help us map our information to the database. It represents the table that is stored in our database. And every time we use this structure to store information to our database, it just creates a separate row, right? It's just a way of letting, um, you know, Spring Boot know that we're about to put something into this database with this specific structure, nothing beyond that. So to let Spring Boot know that we have to use an annotation coming from that dependency that we just created, JPA. And we're gonna use, and to specify annotation, we use the at, and we're gonna let it know that it's gonna be entity by using the word entity.
and you should see that it's going to give you the option to import and it's going to take it from the persist the persistence library so um yeah this is just going to let you know spring boot know that this class is a entity another annotation that we're going to use is at table the at table annotation allows us to specify details of the table that we're going to use to persist the entity into the database so in this case i'm just going to define the name that we want to use for the table so to do that like i said it's going to be at table we're going to open that up and actually let me just import it and then i'm going to define a name and i'm going to set that equal to to do and now we can get started right now we can start defining columns or fields that's gonna that are going to populate our to do table so the first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need id because every to do that we insert into this table should be considered unique especially um you know especially if it's going to be a different person each time right so hypothetically someone can always insert the same title same description all of that but a good way to make it unique is by using an id because every single time somebody inserts something into the table it should give it its own specific id and to do that we'll create a variable and in kotlin we can use two ways to create a variable we can use val or var we're going to use val because val can only be assigned once and with id we do not want the user to be able to assign it a different value so i'm going to use val in this case i'm going to call this id i'm going to make it of type long and i'm going to make it start as a value of zero but there is some annotations that we're going to you know leverage and the first one is going to be at id because essentially we're saying okay we want to let uh, Spring Boot know that this is going to be an ID. It's going to assign this variable to be the ID, right? Another thing we're going to use, or another annotation we're going to use, is generated value. So this is going to create uh, a schema to generate um, our ID each time. Like we don't have to worry about generating the ID. This is going to generate it for us. Um, and since we're just going to use the default schema, it's going to just increment it each time so every single time somebody inserts something into that to the table is gonna you know start at you know one go to two go to three just gonna increment by, by one but you could specify it in a way um, that you want to um, but in this case I'm just not gonna do that I'm just gonna let it just increment by one cool so we got the first column in there it's just gonna be the ID and we're gonna let Spring Boot generate the value for the ID uh, and then the second thing I want to create or the second column I want to create is the title column this is just gonna be the title of the to do so this is gonna be a var because you can be able to change the value of the title if you want to so um, we're just gonna call that title and we're gonna let that be string and we're going to make it default value be equal to an empty string and we're gonna leverage an annotation call column kind of self-explanatory right it just means that this is going to be a column in a table and we can define some details about that column so we can just let um, Spring Boot know that we want this column title to be equal to the name title and another thing is I don't want this to be null right I want to give it a, a default value of an empty string but I don't want anybody to just be able to put in null right and there's other things that you could put in you could you know there's like IntelliJ already pops these up to show you different types of uh, parameters that this column annotation contains, but we're only going to be using these two. Um, so if it's if we set nullable to false, that means this is not going to be nullable. Someone cannot set it to null. If they try to, there's going to it's going to break pretty much. It's going to be an exception. And the next one will be description. And this is going to be the description of what the to do was. Um, this is also going to be a string. We're also going to set this to an empty um, quotes. We don't want it to be null. Um, so we're going to set, or we're going to leverage the column annotation again. We're going to make this name equal to description. It is going to be nullable, or not going to be nullable. So it's going to be the same thing as the title is going to be false. We don't want this to be nullable. Um, and then let's move on to the boolean all right so we want to know whether the to do is done 
or whether it's finished or if it's not finished right so I want to create a variable called progress and this is also gonna be a var because you know the person can probably change their mind and say okay maybe I forgot something it is not done anymore so but by default I want to set for um, progress to false um, and I'm gonna create this column and the name equal to progress and it is also not going to be nullable and all right cool let me just leave some space here and the last two columns are going to be created at and updated at so created at simply just means that on the creation of this to do we want to set the date on when this was created so if you created that Monday at 8 a.m. it's gonna show that or it's gonna generate this creation time stamp that show that you created it at Monday at 8 a.m. it's a good way of keeping track of when things was created and then the second variable is gonna be updated at because um, that's just gonna show if anything were to change you change the title you change the description you change the progress this is the last time you change something within this um, you know to do structure so that would be a good way of you know the user being able to see or keep track of the last time something was updated and we can even show that to the user so let's create the first variable which is going to be created app and I'm gonna make this a vowel because we only want to change this variable once like we do not want it to be able to change after we create it because once it was created it was only created once right so it should only ever be given a value once and we're gonna set that equal to date. Um, I am gonna make this nullable. So I'm just gonna make that equal to null. But I am gonna use an annotation. Um, and that's gonna be called the creation timestamp. And I'm gonna import date using the Java util. And then it's gonna be the second variable called updated at. And this is also gonna be of type date. It is also going to be nullable, but all of this is going to be handled by uh, Spring Boot because we're using these annotations. Um, so it's going to do this automatically. We don't even have to create the time um, the timestamp ourselves. Once it sees that you're going to try to insert something into the database using the structure, it's going to create the timestamp for created at, and it's going to create the timestamp for updated at. So there's another annotation called update timestamp, and whenever something Whenever this structure is updated, it's going to update this timestamp. Whenever something is created, it's going to create a timestamp for this variable. So these are all the columns that we're going to use for our to-do structure. It's going to be the ID, which is going to be uh, the ID is going to be generated each time um, by Spring Boot. Uh, we're going to have a column, a, a, a title, and the column name is going to be title. It's not going to be nullable. Description, um, progress, and these two timestamps. So cool, this is how it's gonna look like in the table. And now it's time to create the repository so we can actually communicate um, with the database using the structure. So to do that, let's right click on repository. Because like I said, repository is gonna be the layer that is used to create to communicate with our database. Um, so let's create a new Kotlin class slash file, but in this case, we're gonna be using an interface. So I'm gonna drop down and then I am going to create an interface called to do repository. Hope I spelled that properly. And then press enter. And let me try to zoom in a little bit. Um, and then now it is time to extend the JPA repository. Now, what is the JPA repository? Um, we, we, we use the word JPA a lot, but it is an extension of a repository. It just contains an API that allows us to use um, the CRUD repository. What is the CRUD repository? It's just an API that contains basic CRUD operations. So we can use it to do basic things such as saving you know, multiple entities, finding things by an ID, deleting, um, deleting entries based on ID. Um, so these are all things that the JPA repository has automatically right out of the gate we don't have to define it ourselves it is already created for us so it's just gonna save us a lot of time all we got to do is specify the domain type which is just gonna be the entity that we just created 
just so it knows, okay, I want to find an ID based on the structure of a to-do, or I want to um, delete something based on the structure of a to-do. It has to know how the structure look like to be able to create the credit operation. So we're going to define that, and we're going to let JPA repository know how the structure look like when we extend it. So let's actually get started so it doesn't sound like I'm talking about the gibberish. So let's actually do that. So first, we actually have to let Spring know that, okay, this is going to be a repository. So let's you know, use the annotation of repository, and let's extend the JPA repository. And like I said, we have to let um, the JPA repository know on what type of domain type or what, stru what the structure is going to look like or what the entity is going to look like. So we're just going to let it know that it's going to look like to do. And we can import to do. As you can see, it's going to go into the package of models and then it's going to take to do. And we got to specify the type of ID, right? So we specify the ID in the to do structure, right? And it's going to be generated and it's of type long. So we're just going to let the repository know that this ID is going to be of type long in the structure. And that is really all, all we need, right? That is how we can take advantage, and that is how a repository is created in Spring Boot. Well, we just got to define, you know, what what type of domain is going to be, and the type of ID that's going to be, and we are good to go. So, in the next portion of the video, we're going to go over how we can take advantage, or how we can start communicating with the database using this JPA repository. We're going to create a service. We're going to start creating the logic on validating data as they come in, and using that after validation to save it to the database. But yeah, this is how we create a repository in Spring Boot um, using the JPA repository. And that is how you create a model or entity in Spring Boot. Hope you guys enjoyed that.